Hello, this is Miss Nubble with Victor Media Pro and MissNubble.com. Today we have a very special guest about it, that's about to sit right here beside of me. But before we start our interview, we want you to take a listen to one of his songs. You guys will never believe who it is. Enjoy. Legendary Luck by John. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. You're well, thank you. I just want to tell you how much of a fan I am. I'm from the Gambia. I'm not from Nigeria. So I didn't really grow up listening to your music, but I heard your music at a Nigerian event, I believe, a few years ago. It was Konko Bilo that I heard. <laughs> and I fell in love with it because, you know, the drums, it was similar to our type of music because in Gambia and Senegal we use a lot of drums. Yep. So I see that you're very, the sabah. yeah, the sabar, you know, the mala, oh, and yeah. yeah, so it was really, that was like my aha moment, like, oh my God, it's awesome. But first, I want to ask you a question that I know you've heard a million and one times, <laughs> it's about your mask. <laughs> yeah. What's the idea behind it? Well, the mask is a message, mm -hmm. it's a very simple message. Uh, basically, I want you to see the mask mm -hmm. and think about your facelessness and your voicelessness right. which is actually like an iconic way to represent the tough state of things for the so-called common man okay. that's a good idea yeah, the and i mean for me i kind of like it i like the originality of it you know it, it not only shows you as an entertainer but as a musician because a lot of musicians these days are so caught up with one to be known the fame, <laughs> you know, but you're just like, just, you know, worsen your, 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 the message, the message, more than, that's what you're more concerned about, more than the man behind the music, more than the man behind the music, so, um, how, how was, when was the first time you started wearing it, Cause were you already a musician then, or that's how you introduced yourself, I was as? a musician initially, mm -hmm. uh, and I had a band, mm -hmm. uh, but then when I eventually decided to, start this uh, it was like about like about seven years after i made the first mask oh wow because at the at the onset i was a little bit um i didn't have the confidence right to be a full-time musician okay. out of fear mm -hmm. for failure oh, okay. so eventually when i got the courage to really move beyond music as a hobby 
and uh, beyond working in the studio, I went back to the mask that I made and put on the bed, and like under the bed, and I was 93, 1994. Okay, so the mask was kind of like your safe haven. It was like, well, if they don't like me, they're not no, gonna know who I no. am. No, it was more like um, I had the message from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and it wasn't about being hidden. Right. It was right for that message of the mask as a symbol of the facelessness. Mm -hmm. But still, I was concerned about being a career musician. Mm -hmm. So eventually when I said, hey, let's go for it, let's wear for the mask. How did your um, friends and family took it? <laughs> <laughs> Initially, many didn't even know who was behind the mask. Oh, so you... But eventually I had to tell them, you know, what oh, I was you. doing. How did they take uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> um, my parents were the ones that were more concerned because they were strict Christian people and it was a little strange because in their minds the first thing that comes to your mind with a mask is a masquerade right. by virtue of our culture and also they were concerned that a musician's life revolves a lot around women and drugs and a fast life and uh, my dad was like hey we sent you to school and we spend money <laughs> are you going to just be a musician I'm saying it's not just I'm driven by something beyond me uh, so they were the ones that were a little bit more concerned than others but by and large when I assured them and they saw that I wouldn't do those things that you are afraid of. I wouldn't get caught up in the fast life. Yeah. Over time, they kind of, you know, Kind of became more acceptant of yeah. it. Nice, nice, nice. So what, the, what is the meaning of Lagbaja? It means nobody or anybody or somebody or everybody. It's, it's a Yoruba word that's been there for ages. Uh, but funny enough, young folks think it's a new word. Or like I came up with it. Like it's like <laughs> it's like Tom, Dick, and Harry in English. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's Yoruba. That just means nobody, anybody, everybody, somebody. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Um, so do you ever reveal your full name, your government name, as we call Never. it? Never. People say all kinds of things. They say I deny. They say a name I deny. On Wikipedia, they throw a name around I deny. It's up to them what they think. Because I love the anonymity that comes also with the message, because it lets you be real. Right. You can I mean, kind of like you can live a normal life outside of a celebrity. Absolutely normal life. Uh, I go to the studio. Um, I go to concerts. I go to church without a mask. That's you know? so amazing. Yeah. And like even when you meet somebody who knows you, and it tells them that's Lagwaja, nobody believes him. Because somehow the image in your mind has to be associated with the mask. That, that is so fascinating. You, it's <laughs> like you're living a double life. In a way. Well, you are living a double life. Sometimes it's confusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so how long have you been in the music industry? Uh, I usually like to date it to the first album, which was uh, 1993. Okay, so that would be like... Uh, from 22 years ago. Was that first album your breakthrough in the industry? Straight away. Straight away. Yeah. Wow. And then, funny enough, it just kept getting better. Nice. That is amazing. That's amazing. And what genre of music do you consider your music? I call it Africano. Uh, simply because I want you to think in terms of what propels the music are the rhythms and the drums and I think that's actually what Africa has to teach the world of music because the Western world which has the biggest music industry is very rich in harmony and melody Africa is incredible in rhythms you know so it's like what we do is we take those rhythms and then we superimpose anything else on top of it. So you could hear a song that has an R&B feel, but the grooves and beats and rhythms are played by our traditional drums with the Yoruba 
Nigerian, African beats, you know. So I call it Africano as a reference to the fact that the rhythms are African. Um, most of your songs are in Yoruba, correct? Or do you have a lot Yoruba, of Yoruba, Pidgin, and English. English. Okay, great. Um, so, what was your past in life like before music? <laughs> school, like everybody else, school. Uh, but even from school, I always knew I wanted to do music. I just didn't have the courage mm -hmm. to go out and do it straight away. Uh, so after school, my first work was actually working in the studio as, as uh, you know, like producing commercials for television, for radio. Uh, and even while in school, I used to attend lectures with the music students. Uh, in the African Studies Department, no credits, just, just for fun, just, for just to learn. To learn. Yeah. So I would say music itself was like always there. Right. Was that um? What did, what were you studying in school? <laughs> music. <School. laughs> <laughs> you were just all aspects of school. School. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you were not a musician, what will you see yourself doing right now? Teacher? Oh, a teacher. Yeah. Okay. Especially, I would say, high school. High school? Middle school, high, high school, school teacher. Uh, any particular subject? Now, I have a different thinking. Mm -hmm. And my subject is not even in the books. It will be more like life. Life. Because really, beyond the music and all the noise of life, right there, there's a lot of learned that I love to communicate with young folks uh, without getting spiritual mm -hmm. and without uh, seeming, you know, like find a way that makes, makes it easy. I actually studied to be a teacher initially, so it's like I really understand the concept of communicating knowledge and skill in a fun way. Uh, so I would say the subject would be very just life like a mentorship kind of kind of okay <laughs> <laughs> that is cool so um besides teaching or music what other hobbies do you have or your interest um it took a long time to stop myself from working in audiovisual because i actually learned to make like movies or music videos oh, nice. and uh, like lots of my videos I edit myself mm -hmm. so I learned editing and stuff like that but you know there's too much to do you can't do everything if I want a teacher I'm not a musician I'll probably be an editor an editor um, what you, I know you know you're like a legend when it comes to the music industry. What are some of your proudest moments? My what? Your proudest moments. Proudest moments. Yeah. <laughs> um, funny enough, I would say it started with the first time I heard my music on radio. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, is this real? At that time, there was no internet, so radio was the only way and it was like huge and big this is me another time was my first tour mm -hmm. internationally internationally especially in the u.s in 1999 it was like wow this is my whole band mm -hmm. and this is something i dreamt of in the corner of my room that i thought i couldn't make a career of uh, it was it was a great moment and of course, you know, awards, you know, here and there, performances with great artists on you know, stage. Uh, lots, 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 of, lots, lots, of, lots of good times. Uncannable moments. Yeah. Um, so, what, have you had any collabs with any artists? Um, a couple. A lot of stuff with, like, you should do Papa oh. Wemba. You know, Jabuka, Yile, Lucky Dube mm. on a project for the Red Cross. Uh, and in Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, mostly artists 
they are not really big names. Okay. Even though they want to work with La Raja, I have a concept in my mind that I think until I do that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't really be able to do the new stuff yet. And the concept is called La Raja and the Elders. Mm -hmm. And this might sound, you know, tired to those who've heard that all over and over again. I'm just a little slow, but I would love to get it done someday. Work with musicians that I grew up loving their music. Uh, and after that, I will be open to collaboration with the younger folks. The younger folks. I was about to actually go on that. Um, how do you see the music industry now? Like, what difference is it from um, the way it was prior to the new school era? Uh, the, the big difference now is access to technology mm -hmm. and that has changed a lot of things. The access has made, has kind of you know, democratized the whole process mm -hmm. because it's now easier for anybody to do their own stuff. You just need a producer to guide you through and um, that has actually, apart from bringing so much music into the spotlight. It has also negatively pushed a lot of music in the same direction. That's a huge difference. So nowadays, you find many young people that have hits having trouble performing on stage beyond just playing back a CD and uh, lip syncing or miming or uh, singing on top of the music. Like now, I have my whole band here. Back then, that was how I used to be because you had to play as a band to record. But now, the new tech has um, taken things in that direction that uh, young folks need to be careful to learn both parts of it, learn the recording part of it, and learn the performer, right, the, the performing part of it too. Um, which, which, which some of our new school artists do you see yourself working with in the future? All of them, whoever oh. wants to. Lots of them have been coming, but soon I hope I'll open mm -hmm. the door for whoever. You know, I'm open to, I love music. Yeah. I go into music because I love music. And really, I, I hear lots of good stuff that I enjoy. So whoever has a good image as a brand in terms of character and has a, uh, you know, some good music, she can work with them. Okay. Um, I would love to go back to, I know that you said you have worked with Yusundu. Yusundu is actually my favorite artist. Well, I'm from, I know. <laughs> I'm from Gambia. Oh, okay. So we listen to a lot of Senegalese music. How was that um, collab like? You know, he's like a legend too when it comes to Mbala and Mbaga. <laughs> uh, he was a great experience. We traveled together, uh, courtesy of the Red Cross. Uh, ICRC is called International Committee of the uh, Red Cross from, from Switzerland mm -hmm. to visit uh, conflict zones in Africa and places that had gone through war and very negative conflict. And from that experience, we were inspired to develop uh, a few songs and record them together. The whole objective was to speak to young people in a language they will understand because music is such a powerful thing. You could write stories, you could write uh, stuff you see in the news. It never sticks because you won't read again. But music, sometimes you're not even conscious, it comes back to you. So it's such a powerful vehicle. So we went to South Africa, uh, went to uh, Kenya, in the Liberia, Angola, and then eventually came to Senegal to record. Then uh, we, we 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 had a great time on the tour beyond just doing music, uh, interacting, talking, and that project was very influential in that he worked a lot with my concept of reaching the people with the message. Uh, it was a great experience.
And of course, Yusu is still one of my favorite artists too. I know. <laughs> Africa or anywhere else. Yeah. He's got a beautiful he voice and a very good spirit. I had, I had a chance to um, to witness him perform here his first time in Dallas. Ah. It was it was superb. It yeah. was superb. And now tomorrow I'll have a chance of <laughs> you know watching you perform as well. Yes. Um, so do you really go into when it comes to your family? Are you a family man? Oh yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, I would say in the last few years, I've been trying to give more time to the family. Uh, that's why I'm back on tour now, because like it's time to give more time to my career also. Somehow you've got to, you know, that's the most important part of life, family, you know. And uh, when you get so engrossed in your career, the family suffers, so it's time to find a balance one way or the other. Um, uh, and I suppose you have kids, are they musicians as well? My kids and my saxophones and my bass guitar. Oh my god, that is so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, without the mask, yeah, the guy has kids. Um, there are those who love music. There is one who's a fantastic dancer. But I kind of encourage them to finish school first, uh, simply because it's, it's, it's good to learn to open your mind in a structured way. After that, you can do anything you want to do. Um, you know, we're in this era now that social media has completely taken over, um, excuse me, taken over our, most of our, the young people of course our life so are you active in social media are you on twitter instagram facebook only on facebook only on facebook yeah you have uh, not joined the twitter or instagram no, bandwagon no <laughs> i might though because i i appreciate the power of it yeah but uh facebook is what i do right now just to communicate, communicate. about tour and stuff like that you see guys too much guys like information explosion uh, and even though you know the platform is powerful the most powerful platform is when people meet people in, in Iraq like we're yeah. doing right now yeah <laughs> like in a like restaurant like in a bar sentence. like you know the concert Eventually, I might do that because my bank keeps telling me we need to make more noise. It's like, hey, yeah, I mean, once you hear my brother and get up there, that's 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 good enough for me. You know? Uh, and, you know, Instagram and Twitter, I feel like it gives you more power to interact with your fans. Like, first, in your opinion, in my opinion, which which would you, if you had to pick one, which would it be? Um, I think. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> the photo is a powerful. Photo is powerful. Is, is, is a but powerful in your it, it, story, right? You know, it tells story. But I I understand why you are opposed to that because you're very private. I'm only opposed to it, but you are right in the in the idea that hey, what do you talk about when you don't want to be seen all the time? But again, you need to promote what you do. So it's a kind of a quandary. So do you have any plans on ever revealing the man behind the mask? Not deliberately. Not deliberately. I wouldn't want to. I don't want to. I don't care to. But right. it's like uh, if you're attacked and your mask is removed, uh, which itself would be a difficult process. You can see there are masks under the mask. I know, under the know. mask. It's <laughs> layers and layers of work. Yeah. I mean, but it wouldn't be, there's a lot of advantage in being masked. There's a lot of living. I love to live. I don't want to be a celebrity. I want to be, I want to be real. I want to enjoy. The day I saw you, Sue, in a concert in Kimmel, in Florida, he saw me, he knew me, but the whole time didn't know who was there. And I had my Nigerian brothers there. And they didn't know. You know, I go to the stadium. They are chanting my song. Oh, wale, oh, oh, wale. I'm, I'm right there. I don't want to lose you. I'm there. You know, uh, I, I love to be real. So it's something I wouldn't love to give up. How do you feel if you were to see 
maybe an upcoming artist following your two footsteps with the whole mask idea. <laughs> will you be proud or will you be like, yeah, you're still in my look? <laughs> proud, proud. It's nobody's look. Right. And as a matter of fact, I've seen guys who've been doing that. Some years ago, like some seven years ago, there was a guy in South Africa who became very popular doing that. In Nigeria, there are about two people who've been doing that. You know, it's a free world. Mine is a message, and uh, it's up to you to communicate your message. Um, so, is this your first time in Dallas? First time in Dallas. Last time we just passed through mm -hmm. from Houston to I don't forgot where. We just drove through. Just it's first first live gig. In I can I, I I can tell you definitely. All of us were so excited. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm I am honored to be interviewing you. To be honest. You know, I am so honored. And too. We just wish you all the best. Thank love. you very much. And do what you do. Be, keep your originality. We're definitely feeling that. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I want to give you a hug. <laughs> awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a wrap. And sitting right here with me is Lag Baja, the legendary. And this is Miss Nabu with MissNabu.com and Victor Media Pro. Till next time. Something in my heart, I'm 20 something. No look at my belly, oh, it's a sign of good living. So you will know, say, Baba, na father. I might be 30 something, I might be 40 something. In my heart, I'm 20 something. Mama, what do you call me? She pop a low one Show.